Number 10. Desert Locusts The biblical plague of locusts is actually here. As if we didn't have enough already. Farmers in Embu County, Kenya are currently under siege by an invasion of crop-destroying desert locusts who are storming in from nearby Kitui County, throwing residents into a panic. It's the second wave of locusts to appear in recent times, eating the subsistence crops that locals depend heavily on to survive. They are currently appealing to the government for help eradicating the ruthless insects, which is urgently needed to avoid outright famine. Authorities in Kenya and other countries have been fighting a war on locusts ever since the creatures began infesting parts of East Africa en masse in 2019. Locusts travel up to 90 miles daily in massive swarms and are extremely difficult to control. They ultimately invaded nine countries following an unusually wet rainy season, which produced prime conditions for reproducing. Some of these places, including Kenya, have not seen locusts in 70 years, according to the fizz.org, and their infrastructures were not prepared to respond effectively to the crisis. Now that the second wave has arrived, better management methods are being developed, but the affected countries still have a tough road ahead of them when it comes to fully defeating invasive desert locusts. Millions of people will face disruptions to their food supplies, and nobody knows for sure when the invasion will end. Number 9. Nara Deer as the novel coronavirus grips the planet, spreading like wildfire from one country to another early last year, things changed in ways we never imagined would happen during our lifetimes. Tourism and travel ground to an abrupt halt as people the world over were ordered to stop going to work and stay in their homes. Consequently, nature began to reclaim urban spaces and wild animals began appearing in places where they are not typically seen. Before the pandemic hit, it actually wasn't too unusual to encounter deer in certain parts of Nara, Japan, particularly in Nara Deer Park, where over 1,000 deer are known to reside. While they are technically considered wild, the animals have long relied primarily on tourists for food. They are not caged, and they freely come and go from the park and wander the city as they please. Once COVID-19 took hold and life in lockdown began, deer began leaving Nara Park in droves. With no tourists around to feed them, they were forced to leave their natural habitat and venture deep into the city in search of food. Locals witnessed the animals in unusual places, like train stations, and in various places throughout the city feeding on grass. While this wasn't the first time large numbers of deer roamed into the city, the uncertainty brought on by the coronavirus poses concerns for future management of the population. Number 8. Snake at the Door San Antonio resident Jose Perez encountered an unexpected surprise one June afternoon last year when he opened the door to his home to let his dog outside and found a huge rat snake coiled around the doorknob on the other side. The four foot long reptile alarmed Perez at first glance, but upon taking a closer look, he realized that it was a non-venomous species. The snake luckily picked the right house. I was surprised but not scared because I knew she wasn't going to hurt me, Perez told my San Antonio. I believed she wanted to go near the bird's nest I have on my porch. The homeowner poked the snake with a long pole, causing it to slither away into the bushes without incident. Perez said he didn't mind if the creature decided to visit again. What a nice guy. Herpetologist Paul Crump from the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department confirmed with My San Antonio that Western Texas rat snakes are harmless to humans, despite their tendency to scare people based on looks alone. But not all animals are safe from these reptiles, which grow up to six feet long and are commonly seen around people's homes in both urban and rural areas due to their tendency to feed on birds, small mammals, and chicken eggs. That aside, there's a good reason not to harm Western Texas rat snakes, according to Crump, who said, They are extremely beneficial to our ecosystem, and if you leave them alone, they will leave you alone. What animal would scare you the most if you found it in your house? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for more animal videos. Number 7. Seagulls Australia is known for its unique, and oftentimes terrifying, wildlife, so it's no surprise that animals occasionally interrupt human activities there. Recently, during the Australia Open's Phillip Island Trophy match at Melbourne Stadium, a flock of low-flying seagulls repeatedly swooped into the court and disrupted a match between players Bianca Andreescu and Madison Brengel. One bird even robbed Andreescu of an ace when it flew at her, interrupting her delivery. While the players chased the seagulls off the field, workers were tasked with cleaning the droppings that they left behind, which presented a slipping hazard. The presence of seagulls at the Australian Open is nothing new, given their affinity for dumpster scraps. But there was no crowd this year due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, and the birds not only showed up anyway, they took the opportunity to explore parts of the stadium they normally steer clear of. Nevertheless, the game continued, with Andreescu nabbing a victory. Number 6. Marbled Crayfish 
This might be the weirdest. In 2005, an unusual freshwater crayfish species began appearing in rice paddies in Madagascar. It was unlike anything farmers had ever seen before and spread quickly throughout the country. A decade later, German researchers determined that the species evolved over the last 30 years or so. Earlier this year, a Monga Bay article describes these creatures, known as marbled crayfish, or Procambarus virginalis, which emerged into existence when German aquarium breeders somehow produced the mutated all-female species. They reproduce by cloning, entirely without males. This is an incredibly rare trait to begin with, but it's hardly ever the only way a species reproduces. One generation of marbled crayfish is genetically identical to the next. These creatures are highly adaptable, and they grow fast. Its presence in Madagascar could threaten the island's nation's unique and fragile ecosystem, which consists of animals seen nowhere else on Earth. But locals have come to rely on the marbled crayfish as an abundant source of protein, posing complicated questions regarding how to manage the population. Some fishermen blame the species for their decreasing catches, while some rice farmers believe the marbled crayfish is destroying their paddies. But researchers know very little about its effect on the environment, and they are currently working to better understand the species' ecological impact. Number 5. Sheep Last May, a video of dozens of sheep taking over the streets of Samson, Turkey, went viral, serving as one of many examples of how wildlife made its way back into highly populated areas where the streets went quiet amid quarantine orders. The flock of over 100 sheep invaded the city, located on the country's northern coast, via an empty highway at night after the local curfew took effect. While the animals seemed fairly relaxed in this unfamiliar territory, residents were alarmed. Seda Sezjin, who filmed a viral video of the sheep, told CNN, When I went to bed to sleep, I heard voices approaching. I couldn't make sense of it at first, and I was scared because there was a curfew. Sezjin went on to say that she was utterly shocked to see the animals in the middle of the city on its busiest street, and that she even thought she was dreaming at first. Just a few weeks earlier, sheep had appeared at a McDonald's in the town of Ebu Vale in South Wales. They weren't there for value meals, as the restaurant was closed, but were happily munching on the property's grass. Local resident Andrew Thomas, who took the viral photo and posted it on social media, told CNN that it's actually fairly common to see sheep roaming through Ebu Vale, but that he saw their presence at McDonald's as an opportunity to joke about how even the animals were experiencing fast food withdrawal. Number 4. Feral Pigs NBC News reported late last year that Vietnamese pot-bellied pigs are overrunning Puerto Rico by the thousands, invading people's gardens and garbage cans, and leaving their waste behind. Roughly five years ago, residents began buying the species as pets. Following Hurricane Maria in 2017, some of the pot-bellied pigs, who can reach up to 250 pounds, broke out of their enclosures. They reproduced rapidly, leading to the ongoing crisis that caused the Puerto Rican government to declare an emergency in 2019, so they could obtain federal assistance managing the population. The invasive species is difficult to control. Vietnamese pot-bellied pigs reproduce rapidly, and they are known to carry diseases, so they can't be killed for food. A few years ago, crews came in and killed around 500 of the animals, but this barely put a dent in the problem. Officials are trying to come up with a new way to grapple with the pigs, which have been spotted in 67 of Puerto Rico's 78 municipalities. While these animals pose problems in some parts of the mainland US and other countries, their overpopulation is particularly out of control on the island. Besides overturning locals' garbage cans and eating their freshly grown produce, the pigs pose a safety hazard, sometimes becoming aggressive with residents. They also make tons of noise, making it difficult for people to live and sleep peacefully. Scientists are studying the best ways to eradicate the pigs, but have acknowledged that doing so could take several years. Their hope is to trap the animals and humanely euthanize them, although this proposal is receiving rampant backlash from animal rights groups who want to see the pigs rehomed to a sanctuary. Number 3. LA Animal Shelter Rats Dog and cat adoption rates rose dramatically in many parts of the world during the worst of the coronavirus lockdowns, as people who were holed up at home longed for companionship amid the absence of face-to-face -face human interaction. In many ways, this is great news, but animal shelters are facing their own unique challenges during these unforeseen times. When the strictest measures were in place, many rescues were understaffed, leaving animals to languish with inadequate nourishment, veterinary care and socialization. Moreover, these facilities sometimes became under-maintained, leaving them vulnerable to pests and other damage. 
Such was the case in Los Angeles, where Los Angeles Animal Services General Manager Brenda Barnett proudly announced the clearing out of the city's animal shelters due to increased adoptions while reportedly silently battling a war against rats at these establishments. Writing for City Watch LA late last year, Phyllis M. Doherty alleged that rats had more or less taken over animal rescues throughout LA, where she said officials were having a difficult time eradicating the animals without breaking one of California's strict laws revolving around the matter. Moreover, Doherty asserted that shelters' no-kill policies might be compelling their staff to figure out a non-lethal way to get the invasive rat populations under control. Records obtained through the California Privacy Rights Act reveal that those involved in trying to conquer the rats entertained the prospects of both poison and oral birth control for female rats, but officials seem to be struggling to agree to a plan as the problem lingers or perhaps even grows. Number 2. Argentine Tigus Florida is infamous for its invasion of animal populations, which include Burmese pythons, iguanas, lionfish, Cuban tree frogs, cane toads, and more. The Argentine black and white tegu is the latest species to join this seemingly ever-expanding list. Growing up to four feet long, these large lizards have an established invasive presence in South Florida and are rapidly spreading to other parts of the southeastern United States. The species, native to South America, feasts on a wide variety of plants and animals, posing a major threat to farms, local ecosystems, and endangered endemic species. These reptiles especially enjoy eggs, putting vulnerable marine creatures at risk. Tegus first established a wild breeding population in Florida over a decade ago, after a captive pet either escaped or was released, but they recently spread to parts of Georgia and South Carolina, according to National Geographic. The creatures have also been reported in Alabama, Texas, and Louisiana. One or two tigus making their way into the wild would not necessarily result in a breeding population, but what's happened now is the result of this happening too often. US Geological Survey biologist Amy Yackel Adams explained to Nat Geo that the climate in the southeastern United States is suitable for tigus, putting the entire region at risk. As climate change progresses, this area may grow. Number 1. Monkeys In 2018, Young, capuchin monkeys made their way into the streets of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil from the surrounding hills. They terrorized residents of the city's southern zone, breaking into their homes to steal fruit and other food. They come in, make a mess, break and throw everything onto the floor, tree hugger reported one resident as saying. One investigation reportedly showed that the monkeys are organized in their attack methods, with one making a mock bird call to alert others that a home invasion is about to begin. Primatologist Christiane Rangel told reporters that these young monkeys are much like human youths in their tendency to be bolder and more fearless than adults. It's normal to see monkeys in the streets now and then, considering the area is located next to Tijuca Park, the world's largest urban forest. But it's unusual for the creatures to arrive in droves and carry out calculated home invasions and raids. It's possible that by feeding the monkeys, residents made them feel comfortable with or perhaps even tempted by the prospect of taking food from humans, especially when facing seasonal food insecurity. As of 2018, the problem seemed to be growing. This has happened elsewhere. Earlier this year, over 3,000 macaques stormed through two villages in Thailand's Rasi Salai district. They came in packs of up to 200 and burst into homes in search of food, entering through doors, windows and even roofs. While macaques have a long-standing presence in the area, their numbers have risen dramatically in recent years, the Bangkok Post reported. Meanwhile, their food supply was depleted, driving them to invade houses and even monasteries. Locals did not want to see the macaques killed off, but for their population to be controlled so that humans and animals could cohabitate more peacefully alongside one another. Number 10. The Vietnamese Bigfoot the Batatut is the Vietnamese Bigfoot, and apparently it terrorizes US soldiers during the Vietnam War. There have actually been myths about this creature for decades, but it wasn't until soldiers began coming back from the war and telling stories of seeing a strange and hairy beast, over six feet tall and quite similar to the North American Bigfoot, that the legend of the Batatut really came to life. It has been sighted several times, but it has actually never been documented. The first recorded sighting was allegedly in 1918, but it was really during the Vietnam War that soldiers began spotting this thing in earnest. Apparently, the one and only sighting that has ever truly been recognized as maybe real came from six men working with the 101st Airborne Division. This all happened while the soldiers were taking a break in a mountainous jungle area. At the time, they simply thought it was an orangutan, but orangutans don't live in Vietnam. 
Out of the bushes, the soldiers witnessed a beast with a long head shaped kind of like a cucumber, a face completely covered in hair, very dark eyes and a huge mouth. Unlike many Bigfoot stories where the witnesses didn't actually see the creature in full, the Batatuts apparently stepped out of the vegetation and regarded the soldiers face to face. The soldiers let the creature go, they took their story home with them, and to date there has not been another sighting like it verified by so many people at once. Number 9. The Soy Island Sea Monster The Soy Island Sea Monster was spotted once in September of 1959. This occurred off the coast of Soy Island near the island of Skye in the north of Scotland. A pair of fishermen allegedly spotted a large, dark object moving towards their boat through the water. The monster was so large that the two fishermen could hear it breathing, and they could see that it had a hump on its back, a rounded head kind of like a tortoise, and a massive gash of a mouth. It was originally described as a hellish monster of prehistoric times. The two fishermen described its body as being somewhere around 10 feet long, about the size of a large donkey, but looking more like a legendary dinosaur. The sighting was so unique it actually made it into the national news media, even being reported on the Illustrated London News. An artist even made their own depiction of the beast, turning it into some kind of sea dragon. But all these years later, not a single additional sighting has ever been made of the Soy Island Sea Monster, and experts have since dismissed any possibility that a sea monster ever existed off the coast of Scotland. Instead, experts claimed that the two fishermen simply saw a very large sea turtle. It could have been that the fishermen had a bit too much to drink, maybe it was a little too dark on the water, and they could even have had just a bit too much imagination that day. Number 8. Sri Lankan Mermaids There is a very strange legend in Sri Lanka of a group of pygmy hominids known as Nitoeo, meaning the long clawed in the local tongue. According to the legend, these strange creatures lived in Sri Lanka all the way until the 18th century, with the very last of them residing in a small cave, where they were cornered and then set on fire by the local people, ridding the world once and for all of these ancient mermaid-like beings. However, the legend is the only proof we have of these things ever existing. There are no bones or artifacts that have ever been recovered to prove the legend, and even inside the cave where they allegedly made their last stand, there have been no remains found. A scientist from Sri Lanka is so determined to disprove the legend of the Nitoeo that he has even made a YouTube video series to debunk their existence, bringing on marine biologists and other professionals. However, many people believe the Nitoeo were real. These creatures were allegedly very similar to humans, but also very close to orangutans, covered with reddish hair, capable of climbing trees like apes, and even able to swim in the water like mermaids. And this isn't that hard to believe, especially with all the recent evidence coming out of Indonesia about the ancient hobbits that once resided on the island, but went extinct around the dawn of man. While nobody has actually seen any hairy hominids in Sri Lanka, and there's no reason why a small tribe of them couldn't be living somewhere on the island today. Number 7. The Yeti The Yeti is a creature that has definitely been seen more than once, and yet Russian researchers have recently discovered the only indisputable proof, at least according to them, that the legendary Yeti truly does exist. According to a recent report by Live Science, the researchers have just found tracks in the snow, as well as a few strands of hair, that have made them believe that the Yeti truly is out there. Of course, there are a lot of people who are sceptical about the findings. After all, the Yeti is supposedly a large, muscular beast, covered with greyish hair, weighing around 400 pounds, and basically a big, scary monkey. It's hard to believe that such a creature has managed to exist for so long without actually being spotted and documented. Even the legendary mountain climber Reinhold Messner, who spent months travelling through the mountains of Nepal and Tibet looking for the Yeti, never once found proof of its existence, chalking up Yeti sightings to people simply seeing bears. The Yeti hairs that were found by the Russian researchers came from a snow cave in Siberia, where they also found a bed apparently used by the Yeti, as well as his footprints. Unfortunately, the hairs have not been scientifically analysed, so there is no way to know for sure if this evidence is in fact evidence at all. Do you believe in the Yeti? Or do you think it's just a bear? Tell me your opinion in the comments below. Then, remember to subscribe to Epic Wildlife if you haven't already. Number 6. Chinese Loch Ness Monster There is something lurking inside the famous Yangtze River in China, and it's being labelled as the Chinese Loch Ness Monster. Footage recently appeared on a popular microblog in China, depicting what appears to be a black creature with an extremely long neck slithering through the waters. 
The video has garnished millions of views, with many people claiming this random sighting is proof that there are other Loch Ness monsters swimming through the waters of the world, and yet some people are skeptical. Professor Wang Chung Fang from the Huazong Agricultural University dismissed the video as nothing but a hoax, saying that the creature in the water was just a water snake. However, if you really take a close look at the video, you can tell it's much larger than an ordinary snake, and definitely similar to what you would think a Loch Ness monster would look like. Some people have been quick to point out that the insane pollution of the Yangtze River could be responsible for a sea snake turning into a monster, mutating like Godzilla into a giant beast. So far, there has only been one sighting of this strange sea monster, and nobody is able to say with complete certainty if it was just a snake or really a rare sea serpent. Number 5. The Alabama White Thang The Alabama White Thang is the weirdest mythical creature that you've definitely never heard of. It may have some relation to Bigfoot, but it's not really clear. So far as the anecdotal reports go, the White Thang roams throughout Alabama, with its main stomping ground between Morgan, Etowah, and Jefferson counties. It's huge, about 8 feet in height, which makes it larger than any reported Bigfoot, and it's completely white in colour. It's the whiteness that doesn't really make sense, seeing as something so big and so pale wandering through the Alabama wilds would easily be spotted by at least someone. So far as we know, there was only one shaky report from the 1940s that detailed the white thang being properly seen. Someone allegedly saw the beast running like a jaguar through the woods, shrieking like the legendary Wendigo. Still, whenever folks in the backwoods of Alabama hear shrieking in the night, they chalk it up to the white thang rampaging through the forest. Number 4. Ireland's Dobar Chu The Dobar Chu is one of the scariest creatures from Irish folklore. It's basically the equivalent of Scotland's Loch Ness Monster only it's a bit different in that there are supposed to be a lot of them. Dobar Chu is said to live in many lakes all throughout the British Isles, and they've been seen there since the days of the ancient Celts. The name Dobar Chu actually translates to water hound, with some people referring to them as Irish crocodiles. These beasts are thirsty for blood, they have a proclivity for human flesh, and they even seek revenge when one of their own is killed. But of course, they have never been scientifically documented, and are considered unrecognised by scientific professionals. The only proof of the Dobar Chu's existence comes from Glenade, in the northwest of Ireland, where sightings originated back in 1684. A single recorded sighting took place in 1896, when a woman named Miss Walkington saw a half-wolf, half-fish creature swimming in the lake and described it to the Journal of Royal Society of Antiquaries of Ireland. To this date, there has never been another semi-verified report of an actual Dobar Chu being seen. Number 3. Tasmanian Tiger the Tasmanian tiger is a large carnivore with stripes that supposedly went extinct at least 80 years ago. However, newly released documents from the Australian government have shown that sightings have been reported as recently as 2019, leading people to wonder whether the Tasmanian tiger truly went extinct or not. According to Tasmania's Department of Primary Industries, there was not just one sighting of this animal, but at least eight in just the last three years. The scientific name for the Tasmanian tiger is the thylacine, and it's a strange marsupial that looks like a weird mixture of a wolf, fox, and large cat. The very last Tasmanian tiger living in captivity died in 1936, and not a single one has been documented since. All we have right now are unverified reports of sightings by civilians. Specifically, there is one very reliable report that came when a Tasmanian tiger allegedly walked out into the road in front of a couple's car, and they had at least 15 seconds to clearly look at the animal. According to both people in the car, they 100% saw a thylacine. This sighting is more legitimate than others, because it was made by two people who had absolutely no reason to lie about it. Either the Tasmanian tiger is simply living in the memories of the people of Tasmania, or there are a few of them still hiding in the wild, smart enough to stay away from humans. As for why they went extinct in the first place, the most likely reason is that the European colonists killed thousands of them because they would eat sheep. Number 2. The Japanese Kappa the Japanese kappa is one of the strangest animals on the list today, and it may or may not exist. The kappa has its origins in Japanese folklore. These creatures are about the size of a child, they have reptilian skin that ranges in colour from yellow to blue to green, and they have faces like apes with a head of thin green hair. They allegedly live in the ponds and rivers throughout Japan, some reports claim they even have webbed hands and feet, and everyone agrees that they smell like fish. But perhaps the most notable feature of the kappa is the indentation at the top of its head, which is regarded as the mythical source of its power. The Japanese claim that the kappa is able to be polite, but is still known as a troublemaker. They don't usually attack humans, 
but they will pull all kinds of pranks, and for whatever reason, they apparently love cucumbers. If you ever get on the Kappa's bad side, it will drown you, kidnap your children, or even pull your intestines out. Of course, this is completely absurd, and these creatures very likely don't exist. One of the most logical explanations for the legend of the Kappa is the giant Japanese salamander, which lives throughout the streams of Japan. It's a prehistoric kind of amphibian, and could very well be the source of this Japanese legend. So far as sightings go, the only evidence comes from mummified remains found in a riverbank back in 1818. However, the strange looking remains have never been verified as belonging to a mythical creature. Number 1. Monster Crocodile It's always strange when paleontologists find a single set of bones of a new species, as it really makes you wonder where all the other evidence is of that particular animal. That's exactly what happens when a skull was excavated in Morocco, unlike any other seen before. The skull apparently belonged to a previously unknown species of prehistoric crocodile, with a shield for a skull. This croc would have looked much different than any crocodile you can see on Earth today. According to a professor of anatomical sciences at the University of Missouri, the crocodile probably had a head that was six feet long, with a shield-like structure at the very top of its skull, kind of like what you would find on a triceratops. This new monster is being referred to as the shield croc. It lived 100 million years ago, and it's the first of its kind to have ever been discovered. Of course, it's never been sighted as a living animal, but there is so far only one skull known on the entire planet. The shield croc would have been around 36 feet in length, and one of the deadliest animals of its time. Number 10. Black and Yellow No-No Are you afraid of snakes? There are actually many snakes that are completely harmless, but we won't be talking about those ones in this video. You're here for the dangerous ones, and when it comes to dangerous snakes that you should never touch, the coral snake is definitely one of them. The coral snake has red and black stripes separated by yellow bands. But there's the scarlet king snake, which by the way is completely harmless, and it has red and yellow stripes separated by black bands. Basically, both snakes look almost identical with the same three colours. This can be pretty confusing. Although, I should say for the record that if you see any kind of snake, whether it's red or pink or blue, you probably don't want to try and pet it. There are many different species of coral snakes out there, and each one is venomous. The general rule is that if you see a colourful snake in the wild, run and don't look back. But if for whatever reason, you can't resist the urge to pet or hold a snake, remember this rhyme. Red touches yellow, it kills a fellow. Red touches black, safe for Jack. Number 9. Decapitated Danger Believe it or not, just because a snake is dead doesn't mean it can't kill you. Sometimes, snakes bite back from the grave. Take the recent story reported by CNN, in which a man almost died after a severed snake head bit him and filled his blood with poison. This happened in Texas, after a man was helping his wife do some yard work. They both came across the deadly rattlesnake, the man picked up a shovel and he separated the snake's head from its body, and he thought that would be the end of the story. But when the man reached to pick up the severed head and dispose of it, the snake head sunk its fangs into his fingers. Apparently, this snake had some pretty good post-death reflexes. According to Dr. Keith Boson, snakes have a very similar reflex mechanism to that of chickens that are still able to run around with their heads cut off. However, the thing here is that snakes are unable to control the amount of venom which they inject because their brain capacity has been greatly diminished, you know, from being decapitated. All the creature is able to do is sink its teeth in and let nature do the rest. In the case of this Texas man, he was forced into a coma for five days. His kidneys failed, he went on a dialysis machine, he needed antibiotics, and it would be days before he eventually made a recovery, though not before getting his left index finger amputated. Number 8. Snake in the Lake A popular lake near the city of Dusseldorf in Germany was recently restricted when an unwelcome guest began to terrorise local citizens. The unwelcome guest was a giant yellow anaconda. And even though this type of snake isn't venomous, it's still able to strangle prey much larger than itself. What makes the snake even more horrifying is that it was much bigger than any other snakes in the area. It was about 8 feet in length. Nobody knows how the snake got there, and luckily no one was injured, but visitors to the lake definitely had to clear out of there. Especially families with small children. There have been several incidences where humans were swallowed whole by large snakes, and we don't want to add any more names to that list. But wait, aren't anacondas native to South America? Yes, yes they are. 
They are not designed to live in the cold weather of Germany. So far as the theory goes, the anaconda probably wound up in the lake because someone had it as a pet, the snake grew too big to handle, and they simply dumped it in the lake to get rid of it. Not cool. Hey, before we continue, I just wanted to say thanks for checking out the channel. If you're picking up what I'm putting down, give this video a like. And don't forget to click that subscribe button for more videos like these. Number 7. Monster Anaconda The last place you expect to find a deadly snake is at your job, unless your job is a South American tour guide. And that's exactly what happened in Brazil. Except they weren't tour guides, they were construction workers. The terrified builders were working on a dam and came upon a giant anaconda lurking in the nearby caves. This anaconda was dramatically larger than the one we just talked about in Germany, estimated to be over 33 feet in length. Apparently, the workers had been carrying out a controlled explosion inside the cave where the beast was living when it slithered out and surprised them. Video footage showed the workers chaining the anaconda to a crane and picking the animal up using their heavy machinery. Rather than letting the snake go on living, the builders reportedly killed it and took photos with it. This is obviously horrible, and yet even more horrible would have been if the giant snake got loose, slithered into a nearby town, and ate a couple of children. But of course, killing the snake was definitely not the solution. Whatever you do, if you see a massive anaconda on your next journey into the Amazon, best to not touch it. Number 6. Python in a Blanket Our next story is every parent's worst nightmare. A giant 7-foot carpet python was recently discovered curled up on a warm electric blanket that had been placed inside of a child's bed in Queensland, Australia. The entire incident was caught on video. While it's definitely a bad idea to touch a massive snake that slithered into your house, this is one of those times where you might not have a choice. The snake was obviously drawn to the child's cosy bed because of the heat being emitted from the electric blanket, and thankfully the parents spotted the snake before putting the child down to sleep. If they hadn't, the parents would have ended up placing their child directly into the jaws of a ferocious predator. As you can imagine, the parents were pretty freaked out. They quickly called in a snake catcher, who came and dealt with the situation. These types of pythons are fairly common in Australia, and even though they aren't venomous, they can use their powers of strangulation to kill children and adults alike. If you live in Australia, do you check your blankets and under your bed frequently for snakes? I'm just curious. Let me know in the comments below. Number 5. Engine Troubles Speaking of snakes in weird places, a driver in the south of Florida recently got a big surprise when he checked under the hood of his prized Ford Mustang and found a giant python staring back at him with its teeth showing. It was ready to strike. It was a Burmese python, much larger than the one we just talked about from Australia. It was about 10 feet in length and strong enough to strangle a grown man to death. The driver was so freaked out that he called officers with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, who actually came and removed the reptile for him. Unlike some people, this guy had a pretty good sense of self-preservation and knew better than to reach into his engine and try to pull the snake out himself. Number 4. The Deadly Cottonmouth Our next story also takes us to the Sunshine State of Florida. A 19-year-old kid named Zamar Miller said his life flashed before his very eyes after being hit on the foot by one of the most venomous snakes in the world. This is the venomous cottonmouth snake. The bite from this snake is so toxic, it can kill a fully grown man in just a matter of hours. According to the report from Fox News, the snake nibbled Miller's foot, his leg erupted in throbbing pain, and paramedics were called to the scene to rescue his life. If not for the paramedics arriving with the correct anti-venom, Zamar could very easily not be alive today. When he was released from the hospital later that very night, he had to use a walker because his foot was so swollen that he could not walk on it. Ouch! Of course, you should absolutely never put your foot anywhere near a cottonmouth snake, as this is what will usually happen. Never ever touch a snake that you find in Florida. In Zamar's case, he obviously didn't know the snake was there. It happened just outside his house, as he was walking towards his own door, the snake lunged out of nowhere and bit him on the foot. It took four specialized officers to find the snake at his home and remove it from the property. It had made itself comfortable living underneath a garden hose cabinet reel. Number 3. Great Big Snakes People in the United States are generally fearful of the cottonmouth snakes, rattlesnakes, and even copperheads. There are too many horrifying incidents that have happened. But the biggest indigenous snake in North America is actually the Eastern Indigo, as it can grow up to 9 feet in length. It is an extremely intimidating creature, completely black and very mean. They primarily live in Georgia, Alabama, Florida and Mississippi, 
but according to the Georgia Department of Nature Resources, they have been vanishing from the wild at an extraordinary rate. The Georgia Wildlife Conservation Section is even making an effort to track down and survey the remaining indigo snakes to try and find out just what their population looks like right now. These snakes are considered federally endangered in both Georgia and Florida because of habitat loss, and this means that if you see one in the wild, you definitely shouldn't touch it, and certainly don't kill it. If you come across an eastern indigo snake, just leave it alone. Turn the other cheek. Unless, of course, the snake tries to bite that cheek off. But these snakes aren't venomous, they don't typically bite humans, and they're not nearly big enough to kill anything other than your pets, and maybe your kids. So yeah, still scary and you still don't want to touch it. Number 2. Black Mamba at the Party The legendary Black Mamba is one of the most infamous snakes in the world, believed to be responsible for the most snake-related deaths in all of Africa. A woman named Chepozite Adomo was a lucky survivor of a Black Mamba attack. She had been walking home from a party late at night when a six and a half foot black mamba slithered in front of her path, coiled around her ankles, and sunk its teeth into her. She screamed and pulled at the snake, trying to get it off her leg, but it simply struck her again and again. What's even more horrifying is that two additional mambas slithered over to help out their buddy. If not for a man who heard her screams and came running with a machete, she likely would have been bitten to death. The man quickly cuts the black mambas into pieces, but the woman was already in horrifying pain and losing her vision. What's really tragic about this story is that since the woman was living in a remote part of Kenya, it was at least 45 minutes to the nearest hospital. Luckily, she managed to survive the drive and be injected with the proper antivenom. Her life was saved, but hers was a lucky case. There are anecdotal reports that say the bite of a black mamba will almost always kill its victims within just 40 minutes. You definitely don't want to touch this snake. Number 1. One Million Dead We've talked about a lot of different snakes today. We have also talked about a lot of different places on Earth where you should never touch a snake. But out of all the countries in the world, the one you need to be the most careful about when it comes to dangerous snakes is definitely India. According to a recent 2020 report from the BBC, it's been estimated that 1.2 million people have died from snake bites in India in the last two decades. Half the victims were between around 30 and 70 years old, with a quarter of them being children. So, which horrifying serpents are responsible for so much death? Drum roll please! The answer is three different snakes actually. The Cobra, the Russell's Viper, and the Deadly Crate. Together, these three types of venomous snakes are responsible for mass amounts of death, with the Indian Cobra killing the most people each and every year. But these aren't the only serpents you need to be careful of. There are at least 12 other species of snakes found throughout India that are also responsible for annual deaths, with over half the deaths occurring during the monsoon season, when snakes come out in droves and begin biting people on the legs. The lesson here is that if you take a trip to India, you better watch your ankles. And let me just remind you one more time, don't touch dangerous snakes. Number 10. The Giant Hogfish the giant hogfish is a rare fish that lives in the western Indian Ocean, from Somalia and Kenya to the Gulf of Oman. In 2019, YouTube channel Kathy published a video of their fishing adventure in Oman when they actually caught a giant hogfish. Its striking dark purple colouring and enormous fangs shocked the group. They just could not believe what they had caught. They were so excited. But they didn't know what it was, but they called it a rare type of parrot vampire fish because of its creepy teeth and red eyes, but it was the strange, magical hogfish. Their guide said you could only catch them in this area. The fishing team quickly released it back into the water after getting some quick, amazing footage. Underwater along the rocks, there were three more of these hogfish checking them out. Viewers applauded their catch and release tactics instead of spearing it or taking it as a trophy. A few people said they should have just kept it and sold it, but the majority were just happy to see a live one and enjoy the group's experience. KV commented it was like catching the rarest Pokemon of them all and then letting it go. They have been overfished in many areas, because apparently they taste really good, but this purple beauty lived to see another day. What would you do if you caught an extremely rare fish? Let it go? Eat it? Let us know in the comments below. Number 9. Mandarin Fish the mandarin fish is a tiny little creature with a whole lot of vibrant colours. It's not dangerous or exciting, but it is very unique. Mandarin fish are saltwater fish, and they are members of the dragonette family. The most colourful of all fish in this family is the striped mandarin fish. It is native to the Pacific Ocean and looks a lot like a goby. 
They are only about 3 inches in size and are certainly unique with all their bright orange and blue stripes. This actually makes them popular fish for people's home aquariums. But if you ever want to keep one of these fish, you should keep in mind that they have very weird dietary requirements. The mandarin fish usually will not eat anything except live food. If you try to give it pellet food or frozen food, it will simply starve. Not all fish are meant to be kept in aquariums, and this is one little guy that's better off swimming around in the great big blue. Number 8. Christmas Tree Worms While not technically a fish, it is in fact a marine worm that lives in tropical coral reefs all around the world and looks just like a pretty Christmas tree. The creature is actually known as the Christmas Tree Worm, and it comes in a massive variety of colours. You can typically find these worms living on big rocks under the ocean in clusters of a few dozen, with each of them being made up of two unique colours. Every worm has two separate crowns that protrude from their tube-shaped body, and each crown is slightly different. The effect is a living worm that looks like a fir tree, with one colour of the inside and a brighter colour along the fringes like Christmas tree lights. The crown consists of radials, which are appendages kind of like bristly strands of hair that are used for the worm to breathe and to catch dinner. For food, these worms love to eat microscopic plants and phytoplankton that swim by them in the water since they're sedentary and hardly ever move once they settle down. Once they find a good spot, they can live there for up to 30 years. Have you ever seen a Christmas tree worm? Let me know in the comments section below and don't forget to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 7. Clownfish Everyone loves the clownfish. There is no tiny fish in the sea quite as unique or remarkable as the clownfish, and its popularity is all thanks to Finding Nemo. Thanks to the animated movie, clownfish are now beloved sea creatures no matter where you go in the world. So, let's take a look at some of the things that make the clownfish truly unique. First, there are actually 30 different species of clownfish. They live in the warm waters of reefs in the Pacific and Indian Oceans and schools of clownfish must abide by a strict hierarchy. Unlike a pride of lions or something where the strongest male leads the pack, clownfish schools are ruled by the most aggressive female. Imagine if the angriest woman in your office was the boss just because she had a bad attitude. This is how clownfish operate. Not very funny if you ask me. But here's where clownfish gets even more unique. According to the living planet, every single one of them is born male. They are one of the only animals in the world that can change their sex at will. When the dominant female at the top of the hierarchy dies, the dominant male will then switch its sex and become female. If you are confused, don't worry, so are the clownfish. But here's where it gets even better. All the male clownfish are super dedicated fathers. They prepare the nest for when the female arrives, and then when she leaves, they guard the eggs and keep the nest clean. Male clownfish are the best homemakers in the animal kingdom. That must be why Disney chose a clownfish for Finding Nemo. Number 6. Royal Grammar Let's check out perhaps the most boring fish in the world. Just kidding. I'm talking about the Royal Grammar fish. It's very unique, it's very small, and actually quite common. They have a vibrant colour scheme and appealing attitude, so that's good, as some pet fish can be bullies to other fish in aquariums. These fish are super peaceful. They're typically half purple and half yellow, and they are great for beginner fish keepers according to Fish Keeping World. If you're looking for a very unique fish to add to your collection, a Royal Grammar fish is actually going to be a great option. These fish come from the Caribbean, so you know they have a good attitude. They can live for up to 5 years, they grow to a maximum of about 3 inches, and they provide any space with a huge boost of colour. These fish are also dirt cheap. You can pick one up for only $20, but I wouldn't suggest frying it up to eat, as that would be an enormous waste of money. While the fish is half purple and half yellow, in the middle where the two colours meet, you will notice a pattern of fading dots. And this is probably the most unique feature on the fish. Why on earth nature has done this, I will never know. Number 5. Wolf Fish It's time for possibly one of the ugliest fish in the world. The wolf fish is a unique specimen simply because it is so unsettling to look at. You almost feel sad looking at its snaggle teeth and wrinkly skin, but don't feel too bad yet. The Atlantic wolf fish is a voracious predator according to Oceana. It has a large head, extremely strong jaws, and enormous teeth that it uses to feast on sea urchins, crabs, and even snails. The wolf fish is a carnivore with special adaptions that allow it to feed on the hard-shelled animals. In fact, its name in Norwegian is Steinbit, meaning stone crusher. This fish can grow to be 5 feet in length, and they hang out in the cold waters of the North Atlantic Ocean. 
Another unique trait that the wolffish has is in its blood, where it basically has antifreeze coursing through its fish veins that keep it from freezing in such cold waters. The wolffish has a body a lot like an eel, but don't worry, they won't shock you and they aren't very aggressive to people. They are most closely related to sculpins, which is another very ugly fish. In fact, anything related to the wolffish is quite hideous. But hey, depending on who you are, you might consider the wolffish mildly adorable. Number 4. Emperor Angelfish The Emperor Angelfish is something of an enigma. The fish changes dramatically from juvenile to adult. When the fish is young, it's mostly black with a very unique spiral pattern that takes up most of its body. But as it grows to adulthood, these spiral circles become wavy lines across its body, and that's the angelfish that you're probably familiar with. You can even catch these fish in the super popular game Animal Crossing. Have you caught one yet? Emperor angelfish are actually relatively aggressive. It might not bite your finger, but on the other hand, it just might. These fish are omnivores and can grow to be around one and a quarter feet in length, according to Animal Planet. They come mostly from the Western Pacific Oceans and survive by eating marine algae and any shrimp that happen to get close enough to be eaten. To be quite honest, the Emperor Angelfish doesn't have much of a personality, but because of its weird patterns and bright colours, it is one of the most unique. Number 3. Sunfish Sunfish, also called molar molars, are kind of unbelievable. The ocean sunfish is actually the heaviest fish in the world. These don't even really deserve to be fish. How can a fish be so big? They can weigh around 5,000 pounds, and they grow to reach 14 feet in vertical height. The weirdest part about them, and what makes them truly unique, is that they don't even really look like fish. The ocean sunfish looks more like a blimp floating through the ocean. They don't have any scales, and are instead covered with an elastic skin which is known to host at least 40 different parasites. The sunfish is crawling with so many parasites that the parasites have parasites. Don't worry, I'm done saying parasites. Molar molars also love to sunbathe. They can spend most of their day near the surface of the water just basking in the sun, which also helps them warm up after diving deep to hunt and eat. Another unique feature of the sunfish is that a single female can lay somewhere around 300 million eggs per brood. Imagine if you could give birth to 300 million babies at one time. You would literally die. But this unique trait has earned the sunfish a spot in a Guinness Book of World Records for laying more eggs than any other animal. Number 2. Pointed Sawfish The pointed sawfish looks like a weird mix between a hammerhead shark and a normal swordfish, but flattened using a giant press. This is a weird and very unique creature. It can grow to be over 20 feet in length. It has between 18 and 22 pairs of lateral teeth going along its giant knife nose. It basically has teeth lining its entire snout but it doesn't use these teeth for chewing. It uses them as a weapon. The sawfish's nose is covered with little pores that allow it to pick up electrical fields that other fish produce. The saw then becomes a homing beacon as the sawfish chases down its targets. And when the sawfish finds its target, it then drives its long, sharp nose through them like Vlad the Impaler. Even more disturbing is that some sawfish are so strong that they can slash with enough force to cut their prey clean in half. You wouldn't want to get in their way. Number one. Humpback Anglerfish I think the final fish on our list for today is not only unique, but it might also give you nightmares tonight. I'm talking about the Humpback Anglerfish. This thing should probably stay in the deep sea, and as far away from the civilised world of human beings. The Humpback Anglerfish is also known as a Deep Sea Anglerfish, and it has a ridiculously large mouth with an equally large stomach and extremely long and pointy teeth. It can basically swallow anything stupid enough to get near its mouth. The humpback anglerfish is just like other anglerfish in that it has a lure which it hangs over its mouth as an attractant for fish. The lure is actually filled with bacteria, and it's the bacteria that make it glow. However, the anglerfish can actually hide the lights from the lure by using a muscular skin flap. Out of all the anglerfish in the sea, the humpback is for sure the most unique simply because of its absolutely horrendous appearance. This thing was never designed to come out of the depths. It lives around 6,600 feet below the ocean surface. Number 10. Allosaurus The Allosaurus is one of the older dinosaurs from the long time period when giant lizards ruled the Earth, living about 150 million years ago during the late Jurassic period, almost 70 million years before the T-Rex made its first appearance. That's right, 
This monster was actually twice as old as the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and may have been an ancestor of that powerful beast. Most of the fossils of the Allosaurus were found in the United States, in a quarry in Utah, and at a different quarry in Colorado. This monster stood 30 feet in length, with half of its body consisting of its ridiculously long tail. It had strong limbs, small forelimbs that were basically useless, but not quite as useless as those of the T-Rex, and, like almost every other lizard dinosaur of the time, three fingers that each ended in a sharp claw, which the Allosaurus probably used to tear at the prey. What's really interesting is that the Allosaurus is one of the biggest scavengers of all time. It's almost only ate living animals if it could easily trap and kill them. Otherwise, the Allosaurus would spend its time feeding on the carcasses of other animals. Still, that doesn't mean it wasn't dangerous. If you ever tried to fight this fearsome predator, it would literally snap you with its tail and probably break your spine. Number 9. Ankylosaurus The Ankylosaurus is a general favourite of a lot of different humans. You will definitely recognise this dinosaur by the huge club that it had for a tail. It had a giant sledgehammer that it could swing around at will, and it even had a helmet of bone and a full suit of armour. The largest Ankylosaurus specimen ever discovered measured 20.5 feet in length, according to a recent study published in the Canadian Journal of Earth Sciences. Most experts agree it weighed at least 4 tonnes. Unlike the lizard dinosaurs that feasted on flesh and blood, the Ankylosaurus was pretty docile. Instead of being geared towards killing, it had evolved to defend itself. This is why the top of the dinosaur was nearly completely blanketed with a thick armour of knobs and oval plates of bone. These are the same types of plated bone found on crocodiles, other modern lizards and even armadillos. The bones form within the skin, creating the ultimate defence against predators with sharp teeth. As for the true danger of the Ankylosaurus, it's all about the tail. A typical Ankylosaurus tail measured around 10 feet long and could be used to literally smash the shins of any predator dumb enough to get close. Considering how big this monster was and how small humans are, getting hit by this club would be similar to being kicked in the chest by a horse. Dinosaurs evolved to have all sorts of strange weapons built into their bodies. Number 8. Spinosaurus The Spinosaurus is recognised as the largest carnivorous dinosaur that's ever lived on our planet. You're going to drop your jaw when you hear how large this dinosaur was. It's almost hard to comprehend. The Spinosaurus stood at 52.5 feet tall, and it was as heavy as a herd of adult Asian elephants. Plus, the Spinosaurus had a gigantic sail of skin on its back that was supported by two long spines, making it a truly magnificent beast to behold. But what's really fascinating about the Spinosaurus is that new evidence suggests it spent as much time in the water as it did on land. It could eat fish and fight sharks, then go back on land and fight a T-Rex. It was truly the ultimate apex predator. The Spinosaurus was more ferocious than any other dinosaur, it was more versatile than any other land carnivore, and it was larger than anything we've seen since. Strong, fast, with huge claws and sharp teeth, plus it taught itself how to swim. It's even had special structures inside of its snout that allowed it to detect pressure waves made by other animals moving nearby in the water. That's like having a sonar system built into your nose. Have you ever seen a skeleton of a dinosaur? Or a fossil? Tell us about it in the comments below. And if you're new here, welcome and be sure to subscribe to Epic Wildlife for more amazing videos just like this one. Number 7. Utah Raptor the Utah Raptor was a close cousin of the famous Velociraptor, which you met in the original Jurassic Park movie. But it's actually much larger and more dangerous than its cousin. The mighty Utah Raptor had claws that were 12 inches long, and shaped like sickles, found on each hind foot. It used its claws to rip and tear while basically kicking its prey until they died. It had super thick leg bones and strong muscles, and these were used for repeatedly driving its steak knife claws into its prey. Many scientists believe that the Utah Raptor hunted in packs, like the most horrifying wolves you've ever seen. They likely targeted prey much larger than themselves, hunting down anything they could eat. The Utah Raptor was on average about 10 feet tall and weighed 1,000 pounds. Plus, they kind of looked like birds. The Utah Raptor was a deadly combination of a Velociraptor and an ostrich. Number 6. Tyrannosaurus Rex It's time to talk about the king of the dinosaurs. The Tyrannosaurus Rex really needs no introduction. It has a legendary reputation as the ruler of the prehistoric carnivores. It was one of the biggest dinosaurs to ever roam the earth, 
and its name literally translates to Tyrant Lizard King. According to live science, this beast stood over 16 feet tall and was about 40 feet long from snout to tail. It weighed roughly 15,400 pounds and was once believed to be the biggest carnivore in history. We know that not to be true anymore, but the T-Rex is still a special place in our hearts. The Tyrannosaurus Rex had powerful hind legs, it could run faster than any professional athlete, and it had a brain that would rival any animal currently living. This means that not only was it a ferocious predator, but it also had the intellectual prowess to match just about anyone you went to high school with. Of course, there were smaller dinosaurs that could outsmart it, but it was still the ultimate beast of its time. It had a great sense of smell, a bite which was stronger than any animal that has lived since, and it had 60 teeth for ripping and tearing. When it came to hunting, the Tyrannosaurus Rex only needed to bite once. Number 5. Trudon Compared to many of the dinosaurs scientists discuss today, the Trudon is one of the smallest. It stood only 4.3 feet tall and weighed less than 100 pounds. Still, it was a dangerous predator that you would not want to have met in the wild. It didn't have much strength, but it had a massively complex brain. In fact, the Trudon had the most impressive brain-to-body weight ratio of any dinosaur currently known to scientists. To get a little more complicated, the Trudon had more neural cells packed into specific areas of its brain than other dinosaurs, meaning that its brain functioned more efficiently. Other than just being insanely smart compared to its competition, the Trudon had super strong vision. It had huge eyes, like big black orbs that gave it superb sight. It could see in darkness and hunt nocturnally, and it was very light on its feet. A pack of Trudon would have been far deadlier than any pack of animals living today. They would have easily gotten out of the way of any large predators while tracking and killing things much larger than themselves. A small village of humans would be easy pickings. Number 4. Gigantosaurus The Gigantosaurus was quite similar to the T-Rex, and yet hugely different in many ways. It definitely competed to be one of the biggest carnivorous dinosaurs of all time. According to the Natural History Museum, it was taller, longer, and thinner than the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The Gigantosaurus was also faster by at least 10 miles per hour. It had better balance, its skull was larger and probably thicker, and yet it had a puny brain. The Gigantosaurus had a brain that was just half the size of that of the T-Rex. This makes it a pretty primitive beast that was more brawn than brain. Still, some scientific evidence suggests that it had a very acute sense of smell, which, when coupled with its athletic abilities, made it a formidable force of teeth and claw that weighed at least 8 tons. Unfortunately, the Gigantosaurus and the Tyrannosaurus Rex never met in the wild. The Gigantosaurus lived between 112 and 90 million years ago, missing the T-Rex by just around 7 million years. Number 3. Carcharodontosaurus Besides just having a strange and unique name, the Carcharodontosaurus was a huge monster to be feared. According to Enchanted Learning, this dinosaur lived somewhere between 110 and 90 million years ago, with most of its fossils being found in North Africa. It was a fierce predator that had a bulky body, ridiculously heavy bones, and short arms with only three fingers and a few sharp claws on each hand. And even though the Carcharodontosaurus was larger than the legendary T-Rex, it was a bit more primitive and had a smaller brain. That means that if these two had ever met in combat, the T-Rex could very well have won in a fight. To give you an idea of just how large this beast was, its skull was about the size of an average person. It could run at around 20 miles per hour, much faster than a T-Rex. Plus, the big dino got its annoyingly long name because it translates to shark-toothed lizard, which makes sense considering the serrated teeth inside the Carcharodontosaurus's mouth were about 8 inches long and could slice through flesh like perfectly sharpened switchblades. Number 2. Deinonychus The Deinonychus, also known as the Terrible Claw, is certainly one of the strangest dinosaurs on the list today. It was the very first dinosaur that convinced scientists that modern birds descended from dinosaurs. This happened in the early 1970s when an American paleontologist named John H. Ostrom noticed how similar the Deinonychus looked to birds. Other paleontologists laughed at him, and the scientific community thought this guy was a joke. Turns out, he was 100% right, and now it appears that chickens are the closest relatives to the Tyrannosaurus rexes. How messed up is that? As for the Deinonychus itself, it was almost definitely covered with feathers. In fact, 
It's highly likely that the Tyrannosaurus and almost every other type of raptor had feathers at some point in their life. And much like raptors, the Deinonychus had hind claws that it used to disembowel and rip apart prey. But here's the coolest and least known fact. This dinosaur was the original model for the Velociraptors used in Jurassic Park. As you may already know, Velociraptors are actually quite small. For the Jurassic Park movie, they based their raptors on the Deinonychus. They took away the feathers and changed the name to Velociraptor because they assumed that audiences would have too hard a time of pronouncing Deinonychus. Let this be a lesson to you that you shouldn't just trust things you see, especially in a blockbuster movie. Number 1. Velociraptor You already know a little bit about the Velociraptor's cousin, the Utahraptor, but it's now time to dig deep on one of the most beloved dinosaurs ever. The Velociraptor lived sometime around 80 million years ago, near the end of the Cretaceous period. It actually got its name in 1924 from the president of the American Museum of Natural History, who combined two Latin words meaning swift and robber to give a proper description of just what this dinosaur was like in real life. Basically, it was a speedy thief. The Velociraptor was probably covered in feathers, as indicated by a forearm discovered in Mongolia back in 2007. But of course, the Velociraptor couldn't fly. It instead used its immense speed and insanely sharp claws, plus its advanced intelligence, to hunt and scavenge. They mostly ate reptiles and amphibians, small dinosaurs and other bite-sized mammals. If Velociraptors were still alive today, they wouldn't actually be that scary. They only had a length of 6.8 feet, meaning that they didn't actually stand that tall. Most average people would be taller than a Velociraptor. Still, considering scientists agree that the Velociraptor could have run at around 40 miles per hour, it probably wouldn't have mattered whether you were bigger than it or not. It still would have hunted and eaten you with dozens of its friends. Number 10. Snake in the Park a woman recently fought to save the life of her dog after her pet was brutally attacked by a giant python in the middle of a city park. This horrifying incident happened in Hong Kong, when a massive python came out of nowhere while a woman was walking her dog Dexter through Sai Kung West Country Park. As you can imagine, snakes don't belong anywhere inside of a city park. They don't belong in city parks, they don't belong in city gardens, and they definitely don't belong in city skate parks. And yet, the way this woman took care of the snake is going to absolutely shock you. Her dog Dexter ran slightly ahead of her and then began barking frantically and making horrifying noises. At first, she thought her pet had run into some kind of wild boar, which are fairly common in Hong Kong. But when she got farther down the path, she saw that her dog was being squeezed to death by a huge python. It had coiled itself around the dog's neck and head and was trying to suffocate it to death. In order to save the life of her dog, the woman began hammering on the snake with her fists. She really did come to the dog's rescue, but her fists weren't deterring the snake at all. It looked like the dog was losing its life already, as Dexter began to slowly stop fighting back. Panicked, Link took out a pocket knife and began stabbing the snake mercilessly in its head. That ended up doing the trick, and the snake lost its grip and then began to slither away, leaving the dog confused but still alive. As for what happened to the snake, it probably slithered into the bushes and bled to death from the woman's attack. Number 9. Bull Gone Loose At a festival in the northeast of Spain, a bull recently jumped into an audience and went on an insane rampage, attacking spectators left, right and center. One person ended up being sent to the hospital in critical condition, while another 17 were hurt during the wild attack. The huge bull jumped out of the arena as a group of men were trying to show off their skills by dodging the bull's attacks as it charged at them. As it turned out, the bull didn't really care for being used as a piece of entertainment. It charged to the gates, jumped over the wall, and stampeded into the benches where the public was sitting, watching what you could say is arguably one of the most inhumane things that still happens with animals today, torturing bulls in Spain for entertainment. Well, this time the bull got its revenge. After charging through the stands, the bull actually found its way into the parking lot and caused even more havoc. It then tried to escape into the forest, but unfortunately, authorities were quick to put the bull down with a bullet. The injured spectators were taken to the nearest hospital and treated for their injuries, and there were no deaths reported. Maybe now people will think twice before going down to watch people torment a bull for sport. Have you ever gone to watch a bullfight? Or are you against bullfighting yourself? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Then, remember to subscribe to Epic Wildlife if you haven't already for even more awesome new videos. Number 8. Shark in the City An extremely rare shark attack just happened in Australia. 
And while this isn't really that strange for shark attacks to happen off the coast of Australia, it is a little unusual when a shark attacks a person in the middle of a city. This attack happened in Perth, when a man swimming in the local Swan River was bit on his upper leg during the first ever shark attack in that area since 1969. Of course, this shark was not very long. It was only about 10 feet, and it was a bull shark. These types of sharks are not typically as horrifying to deal with as great whites, but they are still big and can do some serious damage. According to Kieran Hayter, a local kayaker who came to the man's aid after he was bitten, the water was filled with blood. The shark really took a big bite out of the guy as he swam at Perth's Blackwall Reach Reserve, which is far too close into the city for any shark to be roaming. He was taken to the Royal Perth Hospital in a very grave condition, but was later reported to be making a very good recovery. As for the Swan River itself, this river flows into the ocean through one of Perth's southern ports. Almost nobody would expect a shark to actually swim up the river and start attacking swimmers. The last reported shark fatality that happened in the Swan River was in 1923 when another man was bitten on his legs, but he didn't make it. Mind you, that was nearly 100 years ago. Number 7. Brown Bear Attack in Russia It should come as no surprise that there was recently a brown bear attack in the middle of a Russian city. This particular incident was caught on a surveillance video, when a young man was walking down the street minding his own business and a bear appeared from behind a tree and came charging towards him. Thinking quickly, the guy stood completely still, thinking that the bear would just pass him by. But it didn't. The bear jumped on him and bit him. In fact, the only thing that saved this guy's life was a nearby taxi driver who laid on his horn and began switching his lights on and off to try and scare the bear, which did in fact work. The bear ran away and the driver was nice enough to take the injured man to hospital. But what's really crazy about this is that the 26-year-old was attacked in the middle of the city of Yaroslavl, about 250 miles from Moscow. The bear must have snuck in from the woods nearby because it was hungry and then decided that the man would make a nice snack. Unfortunately, local wildlife experts decided that the bear was a threat to human society and it was tracked and killed by rangers. It ended up being a pretty young bear, only around 3 years old and weighing just shy of 200 pounds. Number 6. Death by Cassowary Imagine how embarrassing it would be to be killed by a giant bird in the middle of your own backyard. If you ask me, it would be extremely embarrassing. And yet, that's exactly what happens to a man named Marvin Hechos when a cassowary killed him in his backyard in his home of Gainesville, Florida. This guy lived 75 years, seeing multiple wars and dramatic changes in every aspect of the world, only to be killed by basically a giant chicken. What's even stranger is that the cassowary was actually his pet. These giant birds are not the best animals to keep around the house, especially in the city, seeing as they grow to be taller than an average human with giant claws on their feet that can easily scoop out your guts. According to the report from CNN, Marvin made the initial call to 911 at about 10 o'clock in the morning. Marvin apparently fell down, the cassowary saw his weakness and it trampled him to death with its claws. Marvin was taken to the local hospital but died from his injuries. Cassowaries are birds native to Australia and New Guinea, and they don't really have any business being in some old man's backyard in Florida. You really have to wonder what people are thinking. Even the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission considers cassowaries to be class 2 wildlife, which means they pose a serious threat to humans and must be kept in specific cages. These are not the best pets for retirement. Number 5. Hotel Lioness a lioness was recently captured on surveillance footage when she tried to get a reservation at the local hotel in the Indian city of Junagad. This happened early Wednesday morning, when the lioness strolled into the very centre of town, began sniffing around the hotel parking, then thought about going inside and trying to get a room. This is not something that happens in most places. Lions typically don't wander into the heart of cities and start poking around in parking lots and buildings. The only lucky thing about this incident was that the lioness arrived at the hotel at around 5 o'clock in the morning meaning there was nobody else there to witness her curious exploring. The big cat came in, she walked around, and then she headed off. According to a statement from the owner of the hotel, big cats actually do frequent this property. Even though it's in the heart of the city, Junagad is a city that prides itself on being extremely close to a wild area where lions still roam free. The gear sanctuary is just a short way off, and sometimes the lions either get bored or confused and decide to take a trip to the big city. The lioness probably got lost and ended up needing to take a break at the hotel. Number 4. Cougar Fights Dog Next up is a cougar that attacks a small dog in the Canadian province of British Columbia. As you might already know, in North America we have our own big cats to deal with. Cougars may not be as big and as mean as African lions, but they certainly terrorise our cities. 
The cougar apparently wandered into the local neighborhood of Coquitlam, went straight into a man's yard, grabbed his pet dog in its powerful jaws, and then ran off with an easy dinner. Lucky for the dog, its owner was able to chase away and scare the cougar, forcing it to drop the dog from its jaws and take off. According to the report from North Shore News, the dog did quickly receive veterinary treatment for the bite wounds inflicted by the cougar, and the dog was expected to make a full recovery. This isn't a rare incident either. Cougals travel all the way along creeks and rivers, directly into the heart of our cities, where they prey on small cats, dogs, and even children if they get a chance. Number 3. Kicked by a Moose This next story is a reminder not to touch wildlife, especially when they show up uninvited to a city near you. There's no better example of what not to do than the woman who was recently caught trying to pet a wild moose in Colorado. The entire incident was captured on camera. The woman walked up to the random moose, it clearly didn't like her at all, and it kicked out its legs in defense. What's totally crazy is that this happened even as the nearby people were screaming at the woman to tell her to get away from the wild animal, calling her an idiot and telling her to keep her distance. Of course, she completely ignored the reasonable advice from the people nearby and paid the price when the noose lashed out and tried to kick her in the face. Lucky for the woman, she didn't sustain any serious injury. However, she was definitely embarrassed. After the moose tried to kick her, she put her head down, didn't look at anyone, and swiftly walked away humiliated. Let this be a lesson to everyone. If a giant moose randomly walks into your neighborhood in the middle of the day, maybe stay in your car and don't try to touch it. Number two, rat attacks. This story of rampaging rodents in the city is so horrifying that it has to be included among tales of giant animals. Rats in New York City are apparently attacking outside diners after being starved to death during the COVID-19 pandemic. Everyone in New York knows that there is no animal more terrifying than a city rat. And because the coronavirus pandemic forced the rats into a state of starvation and desperation, one which they had not suffered previously, they have now turned to attacking people brazenly who are dining outside at restaurants, trying to get their piece of the pie. Forget staying in the sewers. Rats in New York City are now so bold that they will climb out of the gutters, onto your shoe, and even up your pants leg if it means they can get a piece of your artisanal chicken sandwich. Before you know it, they'll even be trying to drink your coffee. Number one, a lynx in the suburbs. In the northern Canadian city of Whitehorse, a lynx recently invaded a neighborhood and attacked somebody's dog. This was a Canadian lynx, one of the most gorgeous cats on the planet. The lynx is far more ferocious than most people's dogs, though significantly smaller than a cougar. A spokesperson for the Department of the Environment said in a recent report that the lynx population in the Yukon is in a precarious state because they don't have enough food out in the wild. This is causing animals like the lynx and polar bears to move deeper and deeper into the cities, where their only option is feasting on your pet. The dog in this most recent attack is believed to have made a full recovery, though it is also believed that the same lynx attacked a different dog in a different neighborhood just a week before, making it a serial dog attacker. But really, you can't blame the cat for just trying to have a meal. After all, a lynx attacking your dog is like your house cat attacking a rat. What's the biggest animal you've ever seen in the city? Let me know in the comments, and thank you for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and stop by again for another amazing video. What's the scariest animal that you have ever encountered in the wild? Do you know if the animal saw you as well, or did you feel threatened?